Hey guys, um, I'm continuing my series tonight. Um, it's like nine o'clock at night here and I've already fallen asleep a couple of times. Um, really tired today, but I wanted to talk to you about somebody who's no longer with us. Um, my father's father, my grandfather, um, was a pilot. He flew B-24s and B-17 bomber planes in World War II and was an officer in the Korean War. He was stationed in the 13th in the South Pacific during World War II. And um, he did not talk much about the war at all. Like, it was too hard for him. Um, he... We're lucky enough to have all of his flight journals from his days flying, which is pretty incredible. And my father and mother actually spent an entire year doing newsletters for me and all of my five brothers and um, our, their spouses and their kids and wrote some of these journals out and did like a family newsletter once a week. So we learned a lot about my grandfather through these journals. and. My grandfather ended up later in life uh, having Parkinson's. I don't remember him ever not having Parkinson's. He passed away a long time ago. Um, but I used to ask him questions about certain things having to do with the war and stuff. Some of the stories that we know of is like, he remembers flying a plane one time with a thousand patches on it. Um, B-24s were very, very heavy and they were um, long distance flights. He was a part of the company that flew some of the longest and furthest missions in World War II. Um, he told me once a story that he could barely get through because he was in tears about flying in. I might get this wrong, but it's, I want to say that it was 12 planes with, no, I think I'm backwards, 24 planes with 12 men crew on each one. And they all went out on a mission and his plane was the only one to return. Um, and while he was telling us that story, and I don't know if I got those numbers right, but the impression that I got was that they lost a lot of good men that day and many days. Um, he came back with shrapnel in his hip. Um, he went to World War II reunions for the rest of his life for his guys in his squadron and his buddies. Um, he was just very humble about his service and what he did and what these men did. And what that taught me and what that influenced me is that was, that taught me the sacrifice that our men in the military and women in the military make for us. And it, it is so humbling to know that even though a lot of these men were drafted, they still went and they fought for our country and they fought for countries that they didn't have any connection to. They gave up their lives and many men did not come back. Um, right now in the news, they're talking about men that are coming back just now, the remains of men from the Korean War, the Forgotten War. Um, my husband and I have been watching documentaries. My husband's way better than me about watching these things because it hurts my heart. <laughs> it's so, the military is so near and dear to my heart. And I am so eternally grateful for the men and women that fight for our country. And my grandfather was my first influence on, um, he was the first person to touch my heart and make me understand that these are real lives that are lost. These are real men that are giving up, and women that are giving up parts of their lives or all of their lives to protect. And they swear an oath uh, for their country and to follow their leaders. And a lot of what you hear now is the suicide rates for men and women in the military, vets, is just, it's heartbreaking. One of my goals as my children get older, um, we have therapy dogs. We, <clears throat> I mean, here's Boomer. Hi, Boomer. <laughs> He's one of our therapy dogs, but our dog, Blue, I wanted to bring home to us so that we, <laughs> hey. Um, I wanted to work with him to be, stop Boomer, um, to be able to go into some of these military hospitals and to be a therapy dog 
to visit some of these vets and um, a lot of them come back with PTSD, a lot of them come back with other issues, but the suicide rate and the, the heart that they lose protecting us and those that they don't even know is beyond anything that I could explain. And so my grandfather was hugely influential for my love of military men and the women, men and women, and what they do for us and the world. So um, he passed away a long time ago, but I still am very respectful of the military to this day. And I've taught my children to be respectful for the military. Even my little brother, Stuart, you know, if you know Marley, um, she doesn't, she's a mixed race. Um, she's half Jamaican and half us, which is German. And um, she, her dad, my little brother, is a member of the Navy. And, you know, he's active duty and he works on helicopters. And I have such respect for the military because of my grandfather and for the way that he opened my eyes to be able to understand what these men and women are doing for us. So thanks, Fred. Fred his name was Frederick Guy Kessner the first.